Hi guys, welcome to Presume Legal. I'm Misha Janice. I'm an entrepreneur and attorney licensed in New York and Florida. Today, we're getting back to the Courtney Clinic case. In the last video in this series, we got a broad overview of this case, as well as the two ancillary cases arising from it. Today, we're taking a look at the probable cause affidavit for the arrest warrant for Courtney Clinic. This is the document that allowed Courtney to be hunted down where she was found in Hawaii four months after the murder of Christian Obamselli. She was extradited to Miami, where she's currently in jail awaiting her trial date, which is not yet set. Let's have a look. Here we have the affidavit in support of arrest warrant for Courtney Clenny. In reading this, I am going to skip over anything uh, sort of administrative and just get into the substantive matters. So the facts in support of probable cause we see are one, initial police response, Miami Police Department, NPD, and City of Miami Fire Rescue responded to one Pariso residences, 3131 Northeast 7th Ave, Unit 2201 Miami, Florida, Regarding a male suffering from an apparent stab wound on April 3rd, 2022, upon arrival, officers located the defendant cradling the bottom of the body of a victim with a, with an apparent stab wound to the chest. The defendant was taken into custody and officers rendered aid to the victim until fire rescue arrived. The victim was transported to Jackson Memorial Hospital, Ryder Trauma Center, where he succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced deceased by Dr. Mezzoso. The defendant was taken to MPD headquarters where post Miranda, she provided an audio and video recorded statement. Following the defendant's statement, she was released pending further investigation and consultation with the state attorney's office. Section two, investigation. The victim's body was transported to Miami-Dade County Medical Examiner's Department. An autopsy was performed by Chief Medical Examiner Kenneth Hutchins, MD. Dr. Hutchins determined that the cause of death was a stab wound to the chest and the manner of death was homicide. Specifically, he found that the victim was stabbed and that the knife punctured the subclavian artery in his right chest. The knife entered in a downward angle to the depth of eight centimeters. Let's see if I can make this slightly larger. There we go. Following the medical examiner's findings, MPD presented and consulted with the state attorney's office regarding the initial facts. As a result, various investigative steps were taken by MPD and the state attorney's office, including several warrants and subpoenas. Additionally, information was received from other out-of-state law enforcement agencies. While not an exhaustive list, MPD investigators and state attorney's office prosecutors have reviewed video and recorded statements 911 calls, records, and data, including cell phone extraction data, collectively referred to herein as the evidence. Accordingly, evidence obtained showed the defendant and victim had a tempestuous relationship since November of 2020 with multiple incidents of domestic violence from both sides over the period of their relationship. One Paris of security and building staff documented so many incidents of arguing including complaints from tenants as far as two floors above the defendant and victim's unit, that one Pariso management was moving toward legal action to evict the defendant and victim from the condominium. While certainly not one-sided, the evidence shows there were prior incidents of the defendant being physically violent with the victim. For example, in July 2021, the defendant was arrested in Las Vegas for domestic battery on the victim in their hotel. Similarly, surveillance from Juan Pariso showed an incident in February 2022 where the defendant aggressively attacked the victim in the elevator. The defendant and victim moved into the apartment at Juan Pariso in January 2022. Almost immediately, incidents of violence and arguments began with Juan Pariso security and building staff documenting many incidents. This tumult also caused the defendant and victim to separate various times, including the last week of March 2022, when the defendant expelled the victim from their collective apartment while the defendant's mother was in town. 
After the defendant's mother left to go home to Texas, the defendant and victim rekindled their relationship on Friday, April 1, 2022. The victim moved back into the apartment at that time. Arguments began almost immediately, with police responding and, conduct- and contacting the defendant, who appeared intoxicated when she made the report on the evening of April 1, 2022. That's the same day that they rekindled their relationship and he moved back in. So that same day, um, the police responded to an incident involving them. Evidence shows that Sunday, April 3rd, 2022, began peacefully with the defendant and victim playing with their dogs in the apartment. At some point, the victim left their apartment and returned with Subway sandwiches for himself and the defendant. Key fob records show the victim left the apartment at 1.15 p.m. and returned at 4.32 p.m. Surveillance video shows the victim returning to the apartment at that time via service elevator one with their two dogs and actually leaving the elevator at 4.33 p.m. At the same time, the defendant finished and uploaded an Instagram live video to her page. Okay, guys, ask me a question. And then if you want me to um, go on live, I lost all my notes. I started getting gel X. I was going to say, um, ask me a question for OF later. So do that. But, um, or like on my last post, because I'm not going to see it like on here. So just like, if you have a question for me, go post on my last post. Cause I'm going to do an OF live later. Um, anyway, what I was saying was my nails, bruh, bruh. What the fuck? Okay. Let me tell you a little story. So my, um, my, one of my middle fingers is this one. This one got like fully ripped off. So this nail got fully ripped off. It hurts. It still hurts. Like when I tap it like this, it still hurts so bad. Um, but I found out about something called gel X. So it's an acrylic nails that I've been getting since I was like 15, which is like what damaged my nails. So I got gel X. It's basically just like painting stuff on your nails and then just like painting like a glue on it. It's basically like a press on nail, but way more expensive, but it's better for your nails. So I've been doing that for like two months and my nail has been growing back to goodness. I thought I was, I was literally looking up like nail transplants guys. Like for real, looking at nail transplants. Cause I was like, if plastic surgery can like make bigger boobs and bigger butts, they can damn sure give me a nail. No, that's actually not a thing. So I actually like freaked out and lost hope for a minute. I was like, damn, I'm not gonna have a nail for the rest of my life. And this is a bitch who gets like long nails. I was very scared anyway. So I found out about gel X. You do this like different kind of like nail extension. Pops off like easy as hell. Very, very easy, but like it's way healthier for your nail. So I'm missing about three. One, one, two, three. Yep, three. Um, but I'm not pissed about it. Do you support the police? I said, um, I've actually, well, uh, yes, I do. I do. I think a lot of times they don't do their job for sure. In my experience, I have, I've, I've, I've not been helped by them, but I think for, for sure, they typically do their job and it shouldn't, uh, I don't know. I did go to like Travis. Cut my nails and keep them short. Wait, hold on. Who is that? that? I would love that. Am I going to go to broadcast live on OF soon? Yes, I'm going to do it tonight. 
That's what I'm saying. I need to get some like dirty questions to answer tonight, but I'm gonna do something else. TV guy, Rick. Man, I gotta click on your profile. I don't even, I don't know what you, I don't know what name it is. Okay. Where do I see myself in five years? That's a good question. Okay. I see myself with... Say, two children. I would say at least one kid. In like five years, I want one kid. Should I have a, a daughter or a son? I want like a kid. Um, a few houses business going on probably not of but we'll see cold is on the gram listen listen to what that's not what he says cold is on the gram i do have only fans yeah go to my go to my bio babe You just said like links up right, man. If that's how you're like going about it, like you're missing out. Come on. Um, ask me, Kovash, would you put a bong up your hole and smoke it? <clears throat> so this is why I need to read questions before I uh, read them out loud. Um, no, I would. I don't know how you could do that, but I think maybe no. Starring Sal said, how old is she? I am 25. Do you need a boyfriend? No, you don't. Summer plans are, so I've been out of the gym for like three months. My booty is kaput, okay? It's gone. It's fucking gone. So... But look, hold up. Let me show you something. I guess like the light is not giving it to me, but like I got like a good little waist now. I got great abs right now. My butt just like disappeared. So summer plans, building my butt back up so that I can be myself again. Because <laughs> I don't have a shelf anymore, guys. Like I honestly don't. I don't. It's like angles, you know? So, <laughs> I'm going to get that back going on. And then, uh, I mean, this is my, my first, like, summer in Miami. So, I'm really excited. The girls here, like, that I know are, like, hot as fuck. They do, like, the same shit as I do. Or, like, they do, like, better stuff, like podcasts or whatever. So, that's, like, my plan for the summer is just, like, hang out with them make content with them, um, work out, go to the beach, live my life, because I'm blessed, you know? That's my plan. You are more than your body. Yes. I, I love that comment. Let me screenshot that shit. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I agree with you. Mm, boobs on point. Thank you. I almost got another boob job. But I didn't do it. Because, you know, I just rather go to the gym. It's unnecessary. Somebody said, why, why have you had so much work done? A year ago, you looked like such a natural beauty. Usually, I wouldn't, like, say answer anything like this but i feel like it's necessary so much work done um okay what so much work done i haven't had so much work done listen this little filter thing is fixing all the things that the work that i would have done i don't need that shit okay so 
yeah. My nose could be a little smaller. This filter fix it, fixes it. <laughs> my my jaw could be a little smaller. Filter fixes it, honey. Mm. Well, I mean, there's like one thing, but like, come on now, go to my OF to talk about that. But like, honestly, it's not surprising. Come on now. He said no more boot jobs. Absolutely not. Damn, there's some mean ass people on here. What the fuck? I miss Austin a lot, actually. My apartment here, like, I can see. And damn, I'm, like, scared to, like, fucking sniffle. Like, I take, like, two Zyrtex a day. I cannot, I cannot breathe. And people are, like, saying something weird. So I'm, like, scared to sniffle. Anyway, yeah, I miss Austin a lot. I really do. I miss my apartment in Austin so much. But, like, I just feel like I'm kind of nostalgic I guess because my apartment here is like amazing like I'm I the ocean is just like right here so it's amazing it's the best apartment that I've ever lived in but something about just like Austin really I just really love Austin all my friends are there my family is there so yeah I do I miss it a lot but you know you do things to grow you got to move around to grow Yes, my eyelashes. Thank you. I look like your aunt. Somebody said I look like their aunt. Okay. Well, okay. Send me a picture of your aunt. Is she hot? I mean, if she's not hot, then I mean, you know, then we got beef. But we don't. You know, we don't have that beef. I feel like I'd be the hot aunt. I'd be the hot aunt somewhere. So I got this new perfume, Chanel. Chanel something. I don't even know what it is. I got it in Tulum. I flew into the Cancun airport and <sighs> I just breathed it in. I uh, flew into the airport. Uh, the Cancun airport and I realized that I packed so fast I forgot my perfume and I was like man I'm gonna have to like go somewhere like around here like after we leave the airport to go pick up some like different perfume then you forget about like duty-free stuff they like they they have like all sorts of like chocolates chocolates perfumes, sunglasses, like everywhere, like in like the international, super international airports. So they had my perfume and I could get a little something to smell good. This is what I wore when I um, went to, to um, Sundry in Tulum. That shit was so amazing. I loved it. I would love to go to India. Absolutely. Life of Crosby, go fuck yourself. Actually, like you have no idea about what what anybody else has been in for. And damn, that like really puts me off. It, like made me trip over my words. It, like my heart beat a little fast. I don't know why people say like extremely mean things. I don't get it. Um. Okay, back to regular programming. 
back to regular programming. Thank you, Rona Drescher. You're sweet. Edgar, yes, I did. I loved it. Elizabeth, are you still watching? That's a good question. Okay, so do I like Miami or more than ATX? Um, it's very different. Very different. So like the view out of my apartment right now is like the ocean and then like Miami Beach. I can see Miami Beach. In Austin, I could see like the, the lake and then like all the other apartments and downtown Austin and like paddle borders and whatever. So it's like, it, and here it's like jet skiers, whatever. It's just like different vibes, like from my apartment. Cause like most of the time that I spend is like in my house, you know? So like my view is very important to me because I don't want to feel like boxed in. I couldn't decide which one was better from like the view, but as opposed to like going out and doing things, my friends are in Austin. Like I miss them so much. Then again, going out in Miami is so much more fun. Going to the restaurants, going to the club. It's just like a lot more fun. It's more eventful, I guess. I feel like I, I belong in my, like a, a, a big city feel, but not like LA. You know what I mean? Like LA is like big city and then like beach feel. It's just very different in Miami and I like Miami better than LA, but as opposed to Austin, I really can't decide. It takes me like 25 minutes to do my hair. I'm 25 years old. My youngest nine-year-old daughter wants to know what you do with your, how you do your hair, so. I have like a, a curling, I straighten it, and then I do like a curling wand. Straighten it and then a curling wand. But I only straighten like the top parts where it's like really kinky. <clears throat> then I do the curling wand. Or I use like a crimper. But crimpers are way more damaging and it takes longer. But what's her name? I would love to, I would love to see her. R Raul, um, go to my bio. That's how you can subscribe. Come on, man. It's always on my, it's uh, been on my bio. Am I lesbian? I mean... I was not born lesbian, for sure. Definitely not born lesbian. Um, but I have some very, very beautiful friends. We'll just say that. Somebody answer for me says she's bi. Come on, what? You can't answer for me. You cannot answer for me. <laughs> Kiss the cam, yes. Okay, I'll, I got Subway. I'm going to ditch. I'm going to go hit my pod and then um, eat my sandwich because I can't. I just can't hit it in front of you guys. You know, it's just not acceptable. So <laughs> I'm going to do that and eat. So um, 
I'm gonna do it all with live tonight. So if you want me to answer a question, just like put it on my last post. Lost my voice. Put it on my last post. And I will see it. All right. Thank you guys. Love you. Call detail records show the defendant called the victim at 401 just before she went live on Instagram. And again at 433 shortly after posting the live video and his arrival into the apartment. Based on phone records and testimony from the defendant's mother, Deborah Clenny, here and after D. Clenny, via a recorded telephone call with the police, a time frame for when the stabbing occurred was able to be determined. In that recorded call, D. Clenny, the mom, confirmed she was on the phone with the defendant via two phone calls that started at 4.43 p.m., and continued until 4.56 p.m. D. Clenny further confirmed she was on the phone with the defendant at the time of the incident. Thus, the stabbing must have occurred between 4.43 p.m., fewer than 10 minutes after the victim returned to the apartment, and 4.47 p.m. when the defendant called 911. The defendant's call detail record shows the aforementioned calls Reflecting the defendant called D. Clenny at 4.43 p.m. for a call that lasted just over six minutes until 4.49 p.m. And a second call at 4.49 p.m. for a little over seven minutes until 4.56 p.m. Accordingly, the evidence establishes that the stabbing must have occurred in the intervening 13 minutes. At the same time that the defendant called D. Clenny, her neighbors began calling Juan Pariso to report a disturbance at the apartment. One Pariso security called 911 at 4.46 p.m., notifying them of the disturbance. 11 minutes later, at 4.57 p.m., the defendant called 911 to inform the police the victim was suffering from a stab wound and requesting help. On that call, the victim can be heard in the background repeatedly saying he's dying and cannot feel his arm. The defendant is also heard saying, I'm so sorry, baby. Ma'am, listen to me. You need to stop screaming on the line and give me the address. Ma'am, what is the address? What's the address? What's the address? What's the address? Please, God, please. Come see my okay, husband. Ma'am, is this a house department or a business? I want you to seven four five three five eight two. Is this a house apartment or a business? Baby, I'm so sorry. Baby, I'm so sorry. Baby, I'm so sorry. Baby, I'm so sorry. Ma'am, can you hear me? If you have a stab with your shoulder, can you sit down? In her telephone recorded statement to the police on the date of incident, D. Clenny stated she heard the defendant yelling at the victim to leave the apartment and the defendant saying the victim was, quote, lying. In her explanation to the police regarding the content of the phone calls of that day, D. Clenny did not say she discussed the incident with the defendant. However, investigators know D. Clenny did communicate with the defendant about the incident because investigators saw a text message from, quote, mom on the defendant's phone recorded at 525 that mentions, quote, self-defense and advised her not to say anything to investigators without an attorney. In addition to omitting her conversations with the defendant, D. Clenny's recorded statement also omits any claim that the defendant said she was being attacked by the victim during the call. Although the defendant admitted to having caused the victim's injuries in her post-Miranda recorded statement, She also provided several inconsistent accounts about the incident. The defendant claimed she armed herself with a knife in response to the victim having shoved her against the wall by the neck, so not choking her. And then she claimed he threw her to the ground, but then allowed her to get up. The defendant's physical body was documented on the date of incident and there were no injuries to her person to corroborate this account. At no time did the defendant claim the victim was armed with any type of weapon. In describing the stabbing incident, the defendant claimed she threw the knife at the victim from a distance in excess of 10 feet. 
Based on the location and depth of the stab wound, the medical examiner opined that throwing the knife from that distance would not have caused that fatal stab wound. In trying to explain her actions that day to the police, the defendant stated, quote, I do not think this that this was, I, I don't know. I really don't know if this was justified at all. Section three, crime scene. The condominium is a three bedroom, three bathroom unit with a private foyer. While each bedroom has a bathroom, according to the floor plan, the master bedroom is the largest bedroom that has access to a terrace shared with the living room and faces east overlooking Biscayne Bay. The other two bedrooms face south, with one bedroom having its own terrace that faces west. Pertinent here is the master bedroom and the bedroom with the westerly facing terrace, here and after referred to as guest bedroom. The physical crime scene showed droplets of blood by the kitchen island dripping to the master bedroom slash bathroom and back to the living room. In the living room by the couch, a bloody knife along with a bloody bed sheet was located. There was additionally a blood trail leading from the living room to the guest bedroom. At the entrance of the guest bedroom, there was a puddle of coagulated blood and blood transfer on the wall, evidencing that the victim collapsed in this room before attempting to return toward the front door. Upon police arrival, the victim was in the defendant's arms at the intersection of the two guest bedrooms in another puddle of coagulated blood. The amount of blood throughout the condominium at different levels, including two large pools, evidences the victim was bleeding for an extend, extended period before police arrived. The bloody knife, similar to the knives on the kitchen counter, was found in the living room floor next to the couch and bloody bed sheet. Conclusion. The evidence in the case, evaluated in its totality, reflect that the victim and the defendant were in a violent and toxic domestic relationship for over two years. The incidents of violence began escalating with the defendant throwing and or using weapons on various occasions. These incidents culminated on April 3rd, 2022 with the defendant acting without justification and causing the death of the victim by stabbing the victim in an imminently dangerous act, demonstrating a depraved mind without regard for human life. Accordingly, based on the totality of the circumstances, your affiant has probable cause to arrest the defendant, Courtney Taylor Clenny, a white female, and then it gives some identifying information, for one count of murder in the second degree of Christian Obamselli with a weapon to wit a knife, a life felony in violation of Florida statute, section 782.04, sub section two. What I appreciate in the affidavit is the documentation of the timeline. I took the liberty to try and put the facts together as they're laid out in the affidavit into a visual. Let's go through it quickly. We have the beginning of the relationship close to the end of 2020, followed by the first incident in July of 2021. Now we know that there were other situations of Courtney being arrested prior to getting with Christian. I mentioned some DUIs in the last video, and there were probably other incidents. But we also know that there were multiple incidents involving law enforcement during their relationship that were not included in the affidavit. When we review the civil complaint brought by Christian's family against Clenny and the building, we'll see in greater detail the amount of times law enforcement was called out regarding the couple. Moving on, we have the elevator incident, then their final breakup and makeup, because that was a recurring series of events. Finally, the affidavit gets real specific about the timeline on the date of the incident. One thing that is not clear from the affidavit, and I just can't recall from other sources that I've researched, is we know Christian went to Subway. He left the condo at 1.15 and didn't get back until 4.43. Did he have a Subway sandwich with him at that time? Did he have Courtney's sandwich? Is this what started the fight? Because he had been gone for three and a half hours. Was Courtney hangry? Unclear. Anyway, he gets back to the condo and 10 minutes later, Courtney calls her mom, Deborah, 
and speaks with her for 13 minutes. Deborah said she was still on the line at the time the incident occurred. So somewhere in that span of 13 minutes, Christian was stabbed. But I suspect that it can be narrowed down even further because we know that the building called 911 at 446 after getting noise complaints from neighbors. I can assume there were a few minutes between the noise actually starting, it registering for the neighbors, the neighbors grabbing their phones and making the calls to building security. So I'd give it at least three minutes for all that to take place. That backs us up to 443. 10 minutes after Christian walked into the condo. So what really went down in those 10 minutes? I speculate that Courtney snapped. She called her mom immediately instead of calling 911 when she was in distress. She didn't call 911 until 11 minutes after the building had called 911. And we know some minutes must have elapsed between the moment Christian was stabbed and the building called 911. As the affidavit states, there were two large pools of coagulated blood in the condo, leading to the conclusion that Christian bled for an extended amount of time before first responders arrived. In the next video, we'll switch gears slightly to look at the civil complaint that was filed against the building arising from these events. In that complaint, we'll get to see a very detailed timeline of all the times law enforcement was called out to the building because of Christian and Courtney. What's mind boggling is that they only lived there for three months. What do you think happened in those last moments? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video in the series. Okay, thanks for hanging out with me. Until next drop, peace.